Hello guys and welcome back to another Scenario Sunday video on the Force 9 YouTube channel. This is the show where we take a situation in football that has already happened, something that could potentially happen, something you'd like to see happen, and we put it into Football Manager Editor and we make it happen on the game and see what happens. Today uh, we're going to look at a uh, Premier League team again. I think most of these will be you know, Premier League teams, like sort of transfers and managerial changes and the like. This is what today is. Today, we're going to be looking at West Ham, who uh, appointed a new manager in the past week. Croatian and uh, former West Ham player, Slaven Bilic. Uh, so, yeah, Slaven Bilic is the new West Ham manager. We've taken Allardyce out from uh, West Ham and put him as unemployed. I did a previous experiment, actually, where Allardyce uh, went to Sunderland. And... Uh, well, he uh, only lasted about a season and a half before actually going to Everton. And uh, that it wasn't going to happen anyway now because Dick, Dick Advocate has uh, agreed to stay on at Sunderland for another year. Even though he said he was going to retire and spend time with his wife. But his wife has given him permission to uh, carry on for another year. Under the thumb much? So yeah, so today's about West Ham. So uh, Allardyce is unemployed at the moment. I imagine he'll get a job eventually. But Slaven Bilic is the new West Ham manager. I haven't changed the backroom staff, so it's still Allardyce's uh, backroom staff. Uh, where's staff? Here it is. So, yeah, so their assistant manager, they've still got, like, Neil McDonald, and they've still got, you know, the same the same sort of youth coaches and the like. It's just, um, yeah, it's just that Slaven Bilic has changed as the, uh, as the head coach, if you like, or the manager. Also added a new player because they agreed a... Uh, where is he? Here he is. They agreed a transfer as well for Sampdoria's Pedro Obiang, a midfielder, 22 years old. He plays for the Spanish under-21s. Signed him from Sampdoria. I can't remember how much they paid for him. I don't know if it was free or how much they paid. I can't remember. I'll put up an annotation if I can find it. Uh, I've also uh, done other editing as well. As you can see, they've already played a match. That's because I've added West Ham into the Europa League this year. Uh, it's not possible, actually, to uh, have a manager start in 2015 you can do it with players you can put a transfer through to go ahead in 2015 but you can't do it with managers so we've had to have Bilic play the 2014-2015 season from there otherwise yeah that's the only way you can do it so I put them in the editor and I've moved them into the Europa League because West Ham will qualify for the Europa League this season through uh, the uh, Fair Play League England came second in the um in the UA for Fair Play League and uh, Ireland actually came third so you've got the uh, University College Dublin also in the Europa League pay me that is that they're playing from the very first round so their first match was July the 3rd and well that is only a few weeks away that is going to be when the under 21 championships will be being played this is in real life by the way uh, and also you know they've got um, a lot of players that will still be on holiday people that won't be fit coming back so what's the, let's just have a look at what team they played for this match. So, okay, they're over here. So they did play more or less the first team, you know, Adrian in goal, Reed and Tompkins, Cresswell, amazing player Cresswell, really good, really big fan of him, of his. Well, yeah, a fan of his football. So they will be playing in the Europa League from the very first round. Uh, so I swapped him out. I swapped out the teams that were in it before. So there was a Finnish team. Uh, and a Swedish team. Um, I had a go-ahead Eagles as well. They also um, they won the fair play. Actually, um, Holland came top. And uh, yeah, go-ahead Eagles were the, uh, were the winners of the, the fair play in Holland. Even though they did also get relegated. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, enough talking about that. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to fast forward one year to um, the end of the first season. So we'll go to probably May 31st. 2015 and we'll see how Bilic's first season happens I will tell you that I did a practice run of the first season Bilic was sacked and uh, David, David Moyes came in they do tend to be different sometimes which is why I think there's some there's you know there's a few people out there that when they do these experiments they do it a number of times and then they like make averages so like the average number of points the average not like the average like position and things like that um I would do that, but I just do not have the time through the other videos that I make for this channel and my other channel, and my job as well. So there just would not be time to do that. So let's fast forward a year to the end of the first season. We'll go to May 2015, and we'll see how West Ham do in their first season under Slaven Bilic. Okay, the first season is over, uh, and I, ha I have not looked at all. I have no idea West where West Ham are going to finish. 
if Bilic is still going to be in his job, anything like that. So we, I'm looking for the first time, same time as you are. So let's go to the shortlist and we'll find West Ham. See where they finished. That's very good, actually. Eighth place in their first season. Uh, so let's have a look at the table, first of all. So uh, in real life, this past season, with Allardyce in charge in his last year, West Ham finished 12th. So they improved on that. They finished 8th. Just missed out on Europa League. Uh, Chelsea, Spurs and Hull finished... Uh, 5th, 6th and 7th respectively and got Europa League places. West Ham finished uh, level on points with Villa who finished 9th. Uh, goal difference slightly better. Relegated uh, were... There says 19. I've had to zoom out a bit because we can't see everything when we actually do gameplay. Relegated for QPR, Burnley and Sunderland who finished bottom. Kenny Jacket is the new Sunderland manager. So if we look at Premier League, we'll have, see if we can find manager movements and see who went where this season. So... We'll set it by date and see who left when. So Mark Hughes uh, was uh, removed from Stoke manager. Glenn Hoddle, came, Glenn Hoddle came in. Glenn Hoddle, Stoke manager. Gary Monk left the Swansea manager in December. Harry Redknapp is the new Swansea manager. Roberto Martinez left, left uh, Everton with a poor league position. Paul Lambert came into Everton. Chris Ramsey left uh, QPR in the, on Boxing Day. Roy Keane is the QPR manager. Uh, Gus Poirier left Sunderland in February. He was replaced by Kenny Jackett. Jimmy Shan uh, left West Brom. David Moyes is in. Why Jimmy Shan? Why was he West Brom manager? Under twenty ones manager. David Moyes. Oh, Tony Poulis was. Oh, Jimmy Shan was caretaker manager. Tony Poulis was sacked. Okay, I see. Uh, Mourinho left Chelsea and they're still without a manager that only happened a week ago uh, Newcastle's Martin Yole and Burnley's Sean Dyche also uh, were uh, removed from their positions so that must also mean yeah John Carver oh he was caretaker manager of course uh, yeah Martin Yole became Newcastle manager so yeah that's uh, they were the movements uh, in the, in the uh, Premier League this season West Ham finished 8th that's very very good so Slavin Milic, now that's a positive start. I'm um, looking at his uh, attributes. I can see they've already come up. Because there's a judging player ability I don't think was 19. I mean, his mentors, apart from all... You don't need physiotherapy as a manager. But mentors are all fantastic. And his coaching attributes don't need goalkeeping coaching. And you've got fitness coaches. But, you know, for, I mean, a defending coach. Because he was a defender by trade, of course, back in when he was playing. Tactically and mentally, 15's good. Man management's great. Technical and working with youngsters could be higher. Where's discipline? Oh, it's on mentals. 15, yeah. So, he's, yeah, he's a very, very good coach. So, let's have a look at uh, West Ham's players now. Um, and see who were the best players. Obiang looks to have a... Well, Obiang had a great first season. That's very, very good. So, we'll go through, we'll go through uh, league stats then. So, Stuart Downing played the most games. He was had an involvement in uh, every single game. Uh, one of the... one appearance was from the bench Cresswell and Adrian played 37 each Amal Fatano played 32 Song played 30 so yeah those are the prominent like sort of people that the, the, the starters basically top scorer uh, was Morgan Amal Fatano. only scored 9 goals um, West Ham didn't actually seem to score a lot of goals so I don't I don't know how let's I'll have a look in a minute I'll see how many goals they actually do it now how many goals did they actually score they scored 52 goals which was, well, around the middle, roughly. Uh, let's just go to the table. It would be a lot easier, I think, wouldn't it? Right. Uh, so, defensively, again, they didn't do too badly. Their goal difference was minus eight. So, yeah, they scored a few, good few goals. But, um, yeah, nine. Alma Fatano with nine was their top scorer. Diafra Sacco got seven. Enna Valencia and Kevin Nolan got six each. Pedro Obiang got five goals. Stuart Downing got five Andy Carroll and Alex Song got four each. Diego Poye, Aaron Cresswell and Matt Jarvis got one goal each. In terms of assists, Stuart Downing with 12 assists in the Premier League. Uh, excellent total for uh, the English. Well, was he playing more as a, as a wide midfielder or as a central midfielder? Because he can play... He's a very versatile midfielder. I don't know how, how, how many games he actually played. Like, where? We maybe go form... So it looks like he went from the centre and like sort of went to the left as well. Sort of 
rotated between you know playing in centre midfield and in left midfield. Mark Noble also got nine assists. I, do you know, I don't know how Mark Noble has not played for England yet. He is a very underrated player, in my opinion. He's been at West Ham for a good 10 years now, hasn't he? He's been there, well, longer than that. Um, played his first game, yeah, over 10 years ago. It was 11 years ago, more or less. So, yeah, I don't know how he hasn't had an England call-up yet. Obiang did very, very well. Three assists for him. A bunch of assists there. Man of the match award, Aaron Cresswell got six. He, again, is a very good player. And I think that he should be playing for England soon, too, as well. Problem with that is you've got two very good, like, sort of, left backs in Bertrand and in, well, Baines. Hasn't played for England in a while. But, you know, it's going to be hard for him to get into it. But I, I think he should be, you know, up there, definitely. Aaron Cresswell. Um... Right, so best passer was Obiang, 82% pass completion rate. Diego Poe only played 15 games, but uh, he also was 82%. And Alex Song, of course, on loan from Barcelona, also got 82%. Tackles, uh, Danny Potts played in six games, averaged seven tackles a game, the uh, 21-year-old left-back. Probably played when uh, Cresswell didn't. Yeah, he, he started the game that Cresswell didn't, and he had five games from the bench. Uh, dribbles, Enna Valencia averaging 3.8 dribbles. Shots on target, 59% of the highest there. Cards, Alex Song and uh, Winston Reed both with uh, 11 yellow cards. So they would have had a two match suspension at some, at some point, or maybe just one. Uh, and red cards, only three red cards for West Ham, which is good. Alex Song got two, and uh, Amal Fitano got one. And the best performer on average was Pedro Obiang, who they got from uh, Sampdoria, of course. So that looks to have been an inspired signing, at least on the game. Uh, other good performers. That, who else got over seven? So Cresswell and Noble got over seven. Alex Song, Downing, Jarvis, Amalfitano. Yaski Linen got seven in the only game he played. Adrian was the first choice goalkeeper. He missed one game because uh, Adrian suffered a jaw injury in October. So yeah, uh, Adrian, you know, pretty decent goalkeeper. I think they need a better one than Adrian. He's good, but I think they can definitely do better. Uh, who were the worst performers? Let's just have a look down here. Uh, so, Cole Jenkinson played in uh, 32 games. 21 of them were starts. And he averaged 6.43. So, it looks to have been a pretty poor season for Jenkinson. Uh, on loan from Arsenal, of course. Um, done a lot better in real life, actually. I think he's a half-decent uh, right-back. If he you know, if he gets some good form in, I reckon he could be up there for England as well. You know, you've got um, Nat Klein playing at right-back at the moment. Um, yeah, there's, 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 there are some good options for England, I think. And I don't think Hodgson is necessarily going with the right ones every time. So, like, the past sort of 15 minutes, they announced the uh, England squad for the uh, Slovenia game. And, yeah, it's not all that bad. But, you know, there's definitely some good options there. And, you know, you can only pick so many. It's based on form. So, Jenkinson, you know, in form on this game, you wouldn't pick him. But I think he's been a half-decent player for West Ham. Uh, who else didn't do too well? Didn't do too well. Winston Reid didn't have a great season. He played twenty-seven games and he averaged six point five four. Tomkins and Nolan again played a lot of games but didn't really do very well. Donaya Henry played in five games and didn't really impress. Uh, Sheku Koyate, uh, fifteen games. That's as I say. We're getting into sort of the average performances now. The likes like Joey O'Brien and uh, Diafra Sacco and Andy Carroll. These are sort of you know the average performers. So yeah, so that's the first season. Let's have a look at their uh, at their fixtures now. So of course they played in the Europa League. How far did they get? They passed the group stage, it, and it looks like that's as far as they went. That's still very good. No, they didn't. They kept going. They got to the quarterfinals. That's really I can't. That's amazing. Um. So yeah, well, we'll, fil we'll filter everything out except for the Europa League. So, wow, I'm, that's impressive. Yeah, I didn't think they'd get this far. Uh, so, of course, they faced Santa Coloma in their first qualifying round, who are a team from uh, Andorra. Uh, they won 7-1 on aggregate. Then they played Linfield, who are, are they Northern Irish? Yeah, Northern Irish. And they won 6-1 on aggregate. Then they played Gior. Uh, I don't know where they're from. They're from Hungary. They won 3-1 on aggregate. And then the playoff, they knocked off Rosenborg, which is a difficult game. Uh, the... Uh, Norwegian team who have no manager or anything, but I probably says that because we haven't got that league loaded. They won one in an aggregate against uh, Rosenborg. That's a good. That's good. And their group is very difficult as well. Bought Bursaspor, Twente, and Victoria Pilsen. That's a tough group. 
and they only dropped points in one game. They lost 1-0 to Bursa Sport, and the rest of their group games, they won. And uh, this, I mean, uh, this is impressive. I mean, this is amazing. Uh, got to the first knockout round, the last 32, and they knocked off uh, Lokomotiv Moscow. They drew in Russia, and then they won 4-1 at home. Then they knocked out Ajax. They won 1-0 at Upton Park, and they drew in uh, Holland. And West Ham knocked Ajax out of the Europa League. I didn't, didn't think I'd be saying that on this experiment. Uh, unfortunately, they got to the court finals and then they were knocked off by uh, Villarreal. 1-1 draw in Spain and then Villarreal won 3-2 at Upton Park. But a great Europa League run. And, you know, it didn't affect their league form either. They still managed to finish 8th. Let's have a look at their league form. They won their first three games, beating Spurs, Newcastle and Burnley. Uh, home defeat against Leicester, a bit of a poor one there. Uh, Leicester also went to 10 men. So yeah, that was that looks to, to have been a bad one. Lost three 0 to Hull as well. They um be, they beat Crystal Palace. They lost to Man City. Beat Liverpool two one. Amal Fatana getting two goals there. Stefan Savic also got sent off for Liverpool. So they played most of that game with a uh, ten men. Um and then some good results here as well. A draw against Chelsea at home. They drew three three at the Emirates. That these are some great great wins here. Some great points as well. Four two defeat against Sunderland at home. Beat Stoke and Swansea. Uh, they beat QPR 2-1. They beat Newcastle, Burnley, Leicester again. The first three, the first three, fix, three fixtures. They beat the champions, Man City 2-0. Sacco and Downing getting the goals there. And then they, concede, <laughs> then they conceded 11 goals in three games. But they were against Liverpool, Chelsea and Arsenal. All of them, well, two of them away. And then a home defeat against Arsenal 4-0. So Arsenal, yeah, just too good for them there. 4-0 win against West Brom. A 1-0 win against Everton. And then they drew against Villa. Their last game, they uh, lost 2-0 to QPR. But a great season. Eighth place is still great, considering how far they went in the Europa League as well. How did they do in the FA Cup? Uh, they got knocked out in the fourth round by Fulham. They beat Wickham 3-1 away in the third round. And then lost to Fulham. And in the Capital One Cup, uh, they, oh, they, didn't, they didn't win their first game. They got knocked out an extra time by Nottingham Forest. Uh, Brit Asamba longer with the extra time goal to knock them out, and there, was, yeah, another red card for Amalfitano. So it looks like he had a, you know, a pretty dirty first season, if you like. So uh, yeah, that's going to do it for the first season. So now we will skip ahead another year, and we'll go to 2016, and we'll see uh, how the second season goes. Can they? Well, they won't be in in Europe this season, so they've got their entire focus on the Premier League. Can they improve on their position? Can they improve on 8th place and maybe qualify for Europe without using fair play? We'll see. Uh, I'll see you very shortly. Okay, the second season is over. It's May 2016. Uh, I noticed two jobs available down there. Man United. I'm assuming that's because Van Gaal has uh, retired. Yes, that's usually what it is. Van Gaal's retired. Uh, and Swansea, what happened with... Um, was it Gary Monk or was it someone else? Harry Redknapp retired as well, so Swansea was his last job, and they're without a manager at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, but we're here for West Ham, though. Let's have a look at West Ham. How did they do this season? Didn't do as well. They finished in 10th place. Bilic is still the manager. Mark Noble is now captain. And they signed Milan Bizovac, who uh, I know very well from uh, my Leon save. So they signed B uh, Bizovac from uh, Leon for £750,000. So they didn't do as well, they finished 10th, and it looks like no Nolan might have moved on as well. Uh, let's have a look at the table then. So West Ham finished in 10th. Uh, buh, 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 buh. 113, drew 12, lost 13. Scored 56, conceded 51. So they had positive goal difference, finished on 51 points, the same points tally as last season. Uh, Liverpool, after winning the first season, went down to 5th. Man City and Chelsea, uh, Man City won the league. Chelsea came second. Both of them on 77 points. Man City won the title on goal difference. Man United and Arsenal get the other Champions League spots. Spurs also uh, in the Europa League. Aston Villa get in the Europa League, probably through winning the uh, the League Cup, maybe? Did they win the League Cup? They did. Uh, Aston Villa won the Capital One Cup. So that's why they got Europa League position as well. So West Ham finished in uh, 10th. Uh, Leicester... Watford, who had come up. Blackburn also, who came up, went back down. Who were the other team promoted? Fulham came back up, and they stayed up, 15th place. So there we go. One thing I didn't look at in my first season was transfers. So Alex Song's of course, gone back to Barcelona, and I assume Jenkinson had gone back to Arsenal as well, if we can find him. Uh, Diego Poirier has gone on loan to Middlesbrough. Winston Reid has gone to Lille. 
Matt Jarvis has gone to Leicester. Sebastian Yetget has gone to Sampdoria. Donnell Henry's gone on loan to Portsmouth. Um, James Collins has gone to MBK Dons. Colton Cole's gone to Middlesbrough. Guy mel has gone to Huddersfield. Kevin Olin was released, and he's still a free agent, which um, I'm surprised no one's got him yet. Uh, so he, he must have like he won't have recently left. Did he, he must not have played anywhere this season? Left on February 2016. He was re- must have been released by mutual consent then, or or just released and given compensation. But yeah, he's without a club. So uh, yeah, we were going to look at transfers, weren't we? We didn't look in the first season. Transfer history. So, yeah, they didn't sign anyone else. They didn't need to because it's a January update, so it should all be done. Obiang, of course, came in. Sales, the only sale they made was Guillemel going to Huddersfield and Carlton Cole being released on a free. And he now plays for Middlesbrough, as I said. So who did they sign this season? Uh, they got Fabian Johnson from Mudgeon Gladbach for £4.4 million. Former Arsenal player Johan Juru from Hamburg for £2.1 million. Goal- He's a goalkeeper, isn't he? Yeah, Wesley Fodoringham, former Swindon, £800,000. Jordan Ibon loan from Liverpool. Kasper Krisk from uh, Twente. Bizovac from Lyon, as we mentioned. They loaned Cole Jenkinson again from uh, Arsenal. And they signed Josh McEachran from Chelsea. Josh McEachran's having a party. Bring your vodka and your jolly. Uh, it's you know, one of the few Chelsea chants I know. Uh, as we said, Matt Jarvis went to Leicester. Other releases, uh, Sean Maguire. Um... Then in Whitehead, yet yeah, gets gone on a free. James Collins went on a free. Loads of loans. Kevin Nolan's with that club, as we mentioned. Medima Baker went on loan. Uh, yeah, that's it, really. Not a lot of happenings outgoing, but a lot of players brought in. Uh, so that's that. What are we looking at now? Let's look at the fixtures. Uh, of course, no European football this time, of course. Uh, right, well, let's start with the Premier League. I think that's the most important, isn't it? And they haven't got Europa League this season. So, once again, they won their first three games. Southampton, Blackburn and Watford. Then they lost away to Newcastle. Lost 3-0 at home against uh, Man United. Six draws in a row then. Um, which is well neither good nor bad. It depends who they're against. Everton, Spurs, Villa, Palace, Fulham and Leicester. You'd expect them to be winning some of them games. Uh, they lost to Hull and then at home to Swansea. Uh, they beat Stoke 3-0. They lost 3-1 to uh, Man City. Another two, another win against Liverpool, one one nil. McEachern with a goal there. Uh, they lost to Arsenal. They beat West Brom four one. They lost four two to Chelsea. Drew with Southampton. Lost to Watford. Beat Blackburn. Beat Newcastle. Three losses in a row against Everton United and Spurs. Draw with Aston Villa. Beat Crystal Palace five two there with uh, four different scorers. Maro Zarate getting a goal there. Did did he, I don't think he actually played in the first season. I'm not sure. Didn't see his name anywhere. Fulham and Leicester victories, then uh, they didn't win in six. Draws against Swansea, Stoke and Man United. And then losing to Hull and Arsenal. Home draw against Chelsea. They beat Liverpool 1-0 at Anfield. Jafra Sacco with a penalty. Uh, Liverpool also went down to 10 men. And they ended the season with a 4-1 win away against West Brom. So very, very good. Didn't finish as high, but they got the same number of points. In the FA Cup, uh, well, they had an unlucky draw in the um, third round. And they lost 4-0 at home to Chelsea. Uh, in the Capital One Cup, uh, they won their first match. They beat Swindon on extra time. And then they lost 4-3 against uh, Spurs after extra time. Um, so it's 3-3 after 90 minutes. And Harry Kane got a 91st minute goal in the first minute of extra time. And they won 3-4-3 rather. And then they beat Swindon in the extra time. And Valencia get an extra time goal there. Uh, right, let's look at the players and we'll look again at league stats and see who played well this time. So, Aaron Cresswell played 41 games. Hold on, how can that be league stats? There's not 41 league games. That makes no sense. How could you play 41 league games in the league when there's only 38 games? Oh, okay. That's but that's fixed it. So, he played every single game and he played every minute as well, Cresswell. And again, did very, very well. Didn't get any goals, but he got four assists and one man of the match 11 times. This guy is doing so well. Has he been capped for England yet? He has. He's got two caps. That's great. I'm I'm, I'm pleased about that. Uh, so, yeah, here's the other, you know, the, the usual suspects for the first team. Mario Zarate played 25 games this time. Uh, McEachran played a lot. McEachran played in uh, 33 of the games. Bizovac played in 29. So, some good ones there. 
few more goals this time as well. Uh, Diafra Saka was top scorer with the 13 goals. So they did actually get a player into double figures this year. Ender Valencia got eight. Down in Amalfitana got six. Zarate got five. McEachern got four. Jenkins and Kuskin, I've got three. Johnson got two. Noble, Obiang and Carroll got one. Uh, assists. Mark Noble had six assists. Downing with six. Didn't do as well this time, Downing. Jordan Ibe with five assists. Valencia with four. Man of the match, yeah, as we said, Cresswell got 11. Best passer was Johan Juru. Played in 22 games and his average pass rate was uh, 81%. Uh, Obiang didn't play as, as many games this year. I'm not sure why, considering he was one of the best players last season. Did well in the games he played. He got a goal. Uh, 80% pass rate. Tackles. Joey O'Brien did not start a game this season. Only came off the bench, and he made an average of you know quite not quite seven tackles a game. Uh, shots on target. Johan Juru was in twenty-two games. Every single shot he had was on target. He's a defender, so I'm not sure how many shots he actually had. Um, well, a few few people with um, yellow cards. Beersavac with eight yellow cards. Tomkins with seven. Amal Fatana was with five red cards. There were six red cards for West Ham this season. Tomkins and Amal Fatana got two each. Mark Noble got one, and Kuyate got one. Best performer on average, no surprise to see Cresswell up there. Obiang didn't play as many games, but he played well. Don't know why he didn't play more. Amifitano and Noble got 7.04, so only five, four players getting over seven this time. The worst performers... Reese Burke only played one game, and that was off the bench. Kuyate played 13 games and did very badly. Joey O'Brien, his games off the bench weren't great. Andy Carroll didn't do very well this season. He looks like he might be on his way. Fabian Johnson was involved in 30 games and he didn't do very well. Zarate, 25 games and didn't do very well. And these guys, you know, the average players. So that's the second season. And, you know, they're still doing very well. Very well. Eighth and then tenth is good. So uh, we'll see how they do in their third season. Or, no, to be... what I'm going to do now, actually, what I usually do is I go ahead three years from now and we go five years into the future. Which I'm going to do. So we'll go to May 2019 now. Well, yeah. 2019? Yeah. May 2019. So we'll look at um, after five years. If uh, Billich before then is uh, either sacked or leaves, then we'll stop there. So I'll stop it every season. And uh, if, he's still, if he's still there, I'll carry on and go to 2019 or until he leaves. So that's what I'll do. So I'll see you uh, either in 2019 or when... I didn't want that. Or did I want that? Yeah. I'll either see you in 2019, or I will see you when Billet is no longer at West Ham. There we go. Got, got it out in the end. <laughs> Hold on. We've actually been offered an interview by Man United. Even though we haven't actually had a job yet. We're not going to take it, of course, because, you know, we have to holiday years. <laughs> That's funny. Alright, guys. I said that I would come back either when Billet is no longer at the club, or when it gets to 2019. As you can see, it's not 2019, it's 2017. So Bilic only lasted one more year. Was he sacked? Or did he leave of his own... Well, under his own power, if you like. He resigned from his role. So he must have been offered another job. The new manager is Fatih Terim. Who was the former Turkey manager. Where did Bilic go? Right. Okay. <laughs> Bellich is now the England manager. So, uh, what happened to Hodgson? Was Hodgson sacked or did he leave? Hodgson retired. So, yeah, that's not surprising. Hodgson would have been, what, in his 60s? I don't know how old he is now. I can't remember. So, yeah, Savin Milic went from uh, doing very well with West Ham and he's now the England manager. When did that actually take place? Oh, so, wow, okay, so... At the end of 2016. So the whole season really wasn't really with West Ham. He didn't really have one more season with them. So this season more or less was entirely under Terim. And they finished 8th again. So just for the sake of it. We'll see how they did in other stuff. They got to the quarterfinals of the uh, Capital One Cup. They got to the... Well, they, only, they went out in the third round of the FA Cup in a replay. They went in the Europa League. Premier League. Well, they lost five in a row there, but they finished eighth, so they must have their second half of the season. Wow. Okay, right, it's not set by date, is it? There we go. So, yeah. So, they, yeah, they, they lost a fair few games, but, you know, there was only one, two, three, four, five, five draws in total, and that was it. So, yeah. So, they won a lot of games, but then they lost a lot of games. They won 18, then they lost 15. 
So yeah, they got more points. They got 59 points. Arsenal qualified for the Champions League. Arsenal must have won the Europa League. That explains that. Everton, why are they in Europa League? They must have won something. Everton won the FA Everton won the FA Cup. They beat Man United 5-0 in the final at Wembley. And then, who's the other Europa League team? Everton. They must have won their Capital One Cup. No, they were... Oh, you're an idiot. Bloody idiot. Fulham in the Europa League. They must have won the Capital One Cup. Either that, or... They did... Fulham won the, Cup, the League Cup. They beat Chelsea 2-0. Zach Clough and Mitri Glue with the goals there. So this season wasn't really under Billich. So it doesn't really count, but... For the record, they finished 8th. So that's going to end this episode then. Um, if it's July, I'm just going to see what their transfers were. If there were any that he made. Jeremy Len, Fabian Shah, Gaston Ramirez all came in before Bilic left. They also signed Callum McManaman, Matthew Dowles and Van Aanholt on loan. They sold Casper Cruz to Swansea. Um, Joey O'Brien and Maiga were released. Um, that's it really, Andy Carroll must still be there so yeah, I'm going to end this here then because you know I can't continue the experiment because he's no longer with the club and he didn't really last this season so it doesn't really count so it was a very good two years at West Ham before he was offered the England job uh, so yeah, Slavin Bilic is the England manager so then, oh, it must have been after the, he, yeah, Hodger must have retired after the Euro 2016 um, in fact has Bilic actually played had any games for England? Let's see. Uh, schedule. 2016. So he has played in some games. So after the Euros, they got to the... Uh, is that the... That must be the... Oh, no, the second round. So that must that must be the... Spain won it. Spain have won the Euros three times in a row. So it must have been a... What is the second round? Is that a playoff? Oh, no, there is a last 16 now, isn't there? Because there's 24 teams in it, of course. They lost to Portugal 3-2 in the last 16. And as we said, Spain won it. They beat Switzerland in the final. So uh, how has he actually done as England manager then? Um, their, his first game was against Wales in the uh, World Cup qualifiers where they lost 2-1. And then the rest of their qualifiers so far, they've won. They beat Faroe Islands 5-0, Iceland 4-0, Holland 3-2, Wales 1-0 and a 5-0 win against Finland in a friendly. So, yeah, that's going to do it because, uh, you know, he's no longer at West Ham. So, we'll end the experiment there. I mean, can't carry it on, but I don't know if I actually want to do those with my other ones. Uh, so, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. If you have any other suggestions for Scenario Sunday videos I can do, drop them in the comments or tweet me with them at the Force 9 I do have a Twitter for this channel now, whereas uh, originally I didn't. Uh, next week there will be another one uh, and it's going to involve Liverpool I know I've already done one with Liverpool but I thought you know they've done some dealings in the past two weeks some of them good some of them not too sure about you know I would give them a chance I would give them every chance to impress but you know at the moment we'll see so next week uh, Football Magic Experiment will be with Liverpool and of course they will be looking at new players James Milner and Danny Ings Bogdan signed for them as well. I have added them on the editor and I'm going to be forming that in the week. Hopefully that will be going out next Sunday. And then after that, uh, we'll see. There is one that I'm planning to do, but it does take a lot of effort, actually. A lot of editing. And uh, we'll see if there's something we can do with that, if I, if I can sort of sort that out. Um, but we'll have a look. Um, so, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye.